we're going to diagram the condensation of a dipeptide. First, you need an amino acid. To make an amino acid, a nitrogen is connected to a carbon, connected to another carbon. The nitrogen has two hydrogens attached to it, and this forms what you could label as the amine group. The carbon has a hydrogen below it, and the carbon on this side has a double bonded oxygen and a single bonded OH group. And of course on top there's the R group that represents a number of interchangeable uh, molecular possibilities that create ultimately all the different amino acids. So to show condensation, we're going to need to remove a water molecule and connect these two together. So we actually need a second amino acid. So you can draw one. Hopefully you can draw the others. And from this, we need to remove a water molecule. The water molecule is going to come out right here. The OH and the H group, in other words, H2O. And then what you need to draw, perhaps just with an arrow, is a connected dipeptide. So you're going to have a nitrogen, a carbon, a carbon, a nitrogen, a carbon, and a carbon. Fill in the outsides as appropriate. Fill in the two R groups. And we have successfully drawn a dipeptide. For good measure, this part that has the carbons in the carboxyl group is actually called the carboxyl group. So ultimately, a oxygen and a hydrogen from the carboxyl group and a single hydrogen from the amine group combine to form one water molecule that you should then draw up on the side indicating condensation. If this to, uh, were to proceed in reverse, it would be called hydrolysis, and you break a water molecule and separate two objects. This can be done ultimately with saccharides or amino acids. Here's a cleaner diagram for you to study.